Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. We're here in San Francisco at the GE Industrial Internet, uh, Internet of Things, uh, Internet uh, Industrial Cloud event uh, here in San Francisco. I'm here with David Floyer, who's the CTO of Wikibon. Earlier this week, Wikibon released uh, under David Floyer's direction, along with Jeff Kelly, uh, a new study defining and sizing this so-called industrial internet. So David, thanks for stopping by theCUBE and sharing yeah. your thoughts with us. You're yeah, very welcome. So tell me about this study, sort of what prompted it, um, what's it all about, and then we'll get into what you found. Well, we're, we were interested in the Internet of Things, what was going to happen after the, uh, uh, the, com the commercial, uh, sorry, the uh, consumer Internet. Um, that was driven entirely, pretty well entirely by uh, advertisements. Uh, Google's making all its money from advertisements in, the, uh, uh, in that space. And we were looking ahead to see what were the other big data areas. And the other big data areas are things like surveillance, obviously, uh, and the industrial internet. And the industrial internet is pretty small at the moment, but it, it appeared to us that it really, the quality of the data that came out of these machines was much, much higher than the quality of data that's coming out of the uh, consumer internet. So is that the big defining difference between the, the internet of things slash consumer internet and the industrial internet? I guess the internet of things and the industrial internet are more closely aligned than the consumer uh, internet, but it's really the difference in terms of the use case, one being sort of ad-driven is the revenue model. What's the, what's the model for the industrial internet? What's driving value What's there? driving the value there? Well, the, the what's driving the value there is uh, the ability to improve efficiency and reduce risk. So you can, uh, you can improve efficiency on a local level uh, with lots of data and get feedback about that particular wind turbine if you've got local processing power. But you can improve efficiency across a set of wind turbines, for example. Uh, how hard do you drive them? There's a cost to driving things hard, but it may be worth it if you're going to make a lot of money because you have a, a, a power outage in some other plant. Um, these sort of trade-offs are done at the moment by seat of the pants, you know, rough calculations. Gut feel. Absolutely, gut feel. Very, very valuable. But if you can do the math and if you can do the uh, analytics in real time and adjust things on the fly, you have tremendous uh, opportunity for efficiency across things. And then even more than that, you can have efficiency across a country. Uh, if you can avoid the uh, brownouts that we've had in, in California and New York recently, those uh, to society are worth a huge amount, absolutely huge amount of uh, reduced risk and, and uh, inconvenience. So bringing that up to a higher level, to another network, again is huge potential uh, opportunities for, uh, for uh, ways of making money. So you said it's relatively small today, but uh, the numbers that uh, you put forth uh, for 2012 were about 20 billion for the industrial internet. Is that yeah, right? That's, that's right. That's yes. sounds it's pretty not sizable. Not it's not mass now. <laughs> 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 but when you look at the total cost of all the equipment out there, what's included in that is the sensors, the equipment, local equipment, the network, uh, uh, any cloud activity. There's not, not a lot of that at the moment. Services. And also in the services and the software Application and the people. development. Yeah. And the people are running it. So it's the, it's the total cost of... Total spend. Spend, sorry, right. on, the, on, the pr on the processes there. S and the return on it at the moment, because it, like anything new, the returns aren't going to be fantastic at the beginning. Uh, those are about 23 billion, uh, we, we've estimated. Well, so let's, let's, let's unpack that a little bit. You talk about the, the spend on the infrastructure yeah. for the industrial internet is about 20 billion. You're talking about the value created right. as a result of that spend is 23 billion. Right. In other words, the, the savings in productivity and risk reduction and elimination of downtime and, yeah. and the like is is 23 billion on yeah. 20. So yes. relatively small value yes. proposition today. Yes. The, the Would ROI not excite you much that. Right. Wouldn't excite you much. So what's that, that look like was. by the end of the decade? Well, by the end of the decade, we think that the spend is going to be around half a trillion, 500 billion dollars. That's a pretty enormous increase. Um, and that's going to be fueled by the establishment of platforms, the establishment of protocols, collaboration agreements between uh, between people, 
that will fuel the potential of a huge amount of added value. And that added value, again, we think uh, by the year uh, uh, um, 2020, will be about $1.3 trillion. Okay, so $1. substantially higher ROI. Much um, higher, 150% ROI. So what's, yeah. what's holding things back today? What, where, what are the headwinds? Is it, is it technology? Is it people? Is it process? Is it just maturity? Is it cultural? It's, it's all of those things uh, that are holding it back. Um, and if you look at uh, how industry in general uh, rides on uh, the initial consumer-led uh, um, uh, any any sort of process, if you look at how many years it took for Flash to come out into the uh, enterprise, it was two years, uh, more than that, more, more like three years before it was at the equivalent level. and. The same thing is happening with the industrial internet. It, it takes even longer because you've got very well established ways of doing things. You've got paper procedures and replacing paper procedures which people understand, they know they tick the boxes, they do the checklists. Replacing those with a computer that's in real time going to decide what to do, that's a big step. For an, especially for an engineer who's got a system that works really well. Absolutely. If, if yes. it ain't broke. Don't <laughs> fix it, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's a big ste step, cultural step. It's a big reliability step. And there are some huge issues in how do you test systems like that? How do you avoid the 0.001% probability that instead of making a smart decision, it's going to make a catastrophic uh, error. The machine. The machine. Yeah. Yes. And those those sort of issues about developing the software, testing the software, getting people comfortable with the software are going to be some of the big challenges over the next decade. So that's a maturity issue. We had Beth Comstock on earlier, the CMO of GE, and she talked about what's next for us is proof points. Yeah. And so we need to see yeah. some of those. What about data standards uh, and the like? Uh, those, those are, in some industries, those are quite plentiful. Um, but in other industries, they're not. So uh, it, it, it depends. In, they've got the PAC system, for example, which are extremely uh, good standards in healthcare. But in the rest of the system, they're still to be worked on. Excellent. All right, David Wilson, thanks for stopping by. We'll pick this up a little later. And, uh, and Bill Rue is here. He's going to come on next and uh, share with you the vision that GE has for the industrial internet and the industrial cloud. So keep it right there. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. You're appreci very welcome. Keep it right there, everybody. We're right back with our next guest right after this. This is theCUBE. We're live in San Francisco.